Chemical engineering is a field all about transformation. That is how we transform raw materials into useful products at scale in a profitable, safe and environmentally sustainable way. A product could be polyester clothing, tritium fuel for a nuclear fusion reactor, your favourite chocolate snacks, detergents, energy, nanoparticles, medicines, the list goes on. For raw materials, crude oil is the most prevalent, but you could also have earth minerals, biomass, and a fuel if your product is energy, and there are many more as well. Anything that involves a process or transformation of some kind is right in the ballpark of chemical engineering. Despite its prevalence all around us, chemical engineering is a relatively misunderstood discipline. Now naturally there isn't time to go through everything in depth here, we will however dive into the mind map, touching the top surface as to what this dynamic field entails. Starting with the origin, chemical engineering emerged in the late 19th century from industrial demands and advances in chemistry and technology. This is also when the foundations were emphasised by George Edward Davis. Early chemical processes focused on production of soda ash or sodium carbonate, ammonia and sulfuric acid. All this progressed towards a focus on synthetics and explosives during the world wars spurred on by the crude oil advance. Rapid advances happened throughout the mid to late 20th century towards healthcare, energy, novel materials, biotechnology and much more. Alongside this advance, one of the most important frameworks in chemical engineering was established, transport phenomena principally concerning how heat, mass, chemicals and momentum are transported in a system. Now there are rather intimidating equations describing the transport of each, in fact I covered the momentum one, Navier Stokes that is, in a previous video. However, once solved, which is typically done computationally, we are able to answer where everything is, how hot it is, and how quickly it is moving in a system. Now, these equations are all a form of the same fundamental conservation law governing every dynamic process that surrounds us. In plus generation equals out plus accumulation. Chemical kinetics also play a big role in chemical engineering. In other words, how fast is a chemical reaction happening? How can we describe this using something called a rate equation? Do we have a catalyst involved that speeds up the reaction rate? And what phase is that catalyst in? Is it a solid? Is it a liquid? All this affects the rate, and understanding this link is critical for designing robust systems. Sometimes chemical reactions alone are not good enough. It can be more efficient to use biological vectors to produce the desired chemical in question. In some cases, the bacteria has to be genetically engineered, like the production of insulin. We have to isolate the insulin gene, insert it into a circular strip of bacterial DNA called a plasmid, put it back in the cell, and then we produce our product. This can get incredibly complex to model in a system, with techniques like metabolic flux analysis coming into play. Closely linked is chemical thermodynamics. One use for this is describing how heat and mechanical work can be efficiently interconverted in a system like in an industrial process or a domestic heat pump. We can also use it to understand the phases that exist when mixing substances together. Do we have phase separation, like with oil and water, or do we have one uniform liquid? This affects how we process substances and separate mixtures out. We can also apply thermodynamics with mass transport phenomena to design electrochemical systems like batteries. Moving up in scale, the building blocks for any chemical engineering process are unit operations. The unit operation at the heart of it all is the chemical reactor, for which there are many different types. There are batch reactors, like a cooking pot at home, or fluidized bed reactors, where solid reactants are suspended or fluidized in a gas flow fermentation reactors with specialised oxygen supplies and growth mediums for organisms, and the list goes on. There are unit operations for separating mixtures, like distillation columns, if we have a liquid mixture, like crude oil, or specialised membranes and solvents if you have a gas mixture. Carbon capture is a great example of this, where an amine solvent is typically used to absorb CO2 from the air. Heat exchangers can be used to heat or cool chemical streams. Compressors can increase the pressure of a gas stream. Homogenization can be used to break open cells if the bacteria we were using to make our product generated it inside the cell. And the list of unit operations goes on. 
Thankfully, however, all these unit operations can be divided up depending on whether they principally transport heat, mass, or momentum, or a mix of the three. Moving up in scale again to process synthesis, how do we choose and optimise the right unit operations and construct them into an optimal order to bring about a desired transformation? We typically represent this on a process flow diagram with symbols for each unit operation. This is amongst other design documents like PNIDs. Generally speaking, we have to prepare our feedstock materials and then react them together, separate our useful products from the mixture, recycle any unreacted components back, refine the products and et voila. And some chemical processes can be very, very complex indeed. Then moving up to the plant scale, how do we physically lay the process out? What are the economics of the business regarding capital costs, expected turnovers, operating expenditure? How can I apply the basic fundamentals of chemical engineering to reducing waste like recycling heat or waste chemicals or unreacted reactants within the process? How are the resiliencies and optimality of the supply chains for each needed material? We must also consider plant-wide how we control our process in case of any disturbance to operating conditions. If our plant is outside, then the temperature of the surroundings is important. Most importantly, how do we construct an overall process which is safe so we avoid catastrophic accidents? Understanding the different processes encountered and the tree-like structure of the chemicals industry is important. For pharmaceuticals, batch processing, fermentation, membrane filtration, homogenization are typical. For industries like oil and gas and bulk chemicals, continuous higher throughput processes tend to be favoured. For oil and gas, distillation columns are used to separate out the highly complex mixtures in crude oil or pyrolyzed biomass oil and much more. In fact, crude oil still serves the backbone of a lot of the chemicals industry and modern day living, with in excess of 4 billion tonnes of it being refined every year globally, that's about 90 million barrels a day, into multiple main product streams. And there are many more industries in which chemical engineering powers the underlying core. Planetary sustainability is becoming increasingly prevalent for chemical engineering. Life cycle assessments are used to assess environmental friendliness of a process across its whole life cycle. How do we move towards circular economies? A circular economy aims to minimise waste and maximise resource efficiency use, thereby ensuring a circular flow of materials. Are there any synergies between chemical industries where the waste stream of one can be used as the feedstock of another? Can we design processes that make creative use of available feedstocks to get this circular flow of materials? With the advent of artificial intelligence, industries are progressively looking to move to more efficient production through digitization, so-called smart manufacturing and big data. Modern chemical engineering also encompasses chemical product design, things like biomedical devices or complex formulations, development of cutting-edge technologies, and novel, more sustainable processes. So there we have it, a map to this broad and immensely exciting field from the scale of molecules to planetary level. Please do subscribe and share if you enjoyed the video, and which area of chemical engineering fascinates you the most? Put your answer in the comments below.